What we're going to start with is the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment has been described as the central mystery of quantum mechanics, as embodying, as illustrating in the best possible way a very central mystery about quantum mechanics. Richard Feynman, Nobel Prize for Physics 1965, says, we choose to examine a phenomenon which is impossible, absolutely impossible to explain in any classical way, and which has in it the heart of quantum mechanics. In reality, it contains the only mystery. To start to understand the, the double slit experiment, we need to understand something about two things. First is waves. So I'm going to take you on a refresher course on your high school physics. What is a wave? Um, in physics, waves are what we call coordinated motion within a medium. And so the top illustration there shows uh, a tank, a water tank, a tank full of water. We drop into it a pebble, uh, an object, falling object. It hits and makes a splash. Now the splash begins to radiate out. Anybody ever seen a wave? Raise your hand if you've seen a wave. Okay, thank you. And it goes out. What happens to the object that started the wave? It falls to the bottom of the tank, right? Uh, does it do any further traveling? No. Uh, what is it about a wave that you would say travels, that moves? The water, you said the motion. Okay. The water moves. How does the water move? The water does move. How does the water move? Okay, you're, you're giving an undulating like that. Uh, in fact, you see at the bottom, the water moves, but it basically kind of moves like that. It, it moves a little bit of a circle, and so this one kind of knocks into this one and moves that one over, and so each particle in the water, each water molecule, it just kind of goes like this. You've ever seen a, a, a buoy on the lake as a wave comes by? It's tied down. If it wasn't tied down, like say a piece of driftwood or something. A big wave comes along and it moves the log, the driftwood, and then it kind of comes back to almost where it was before. So the wave is going through, what we think of as wave motion is going through, but each particle is really just making little up and down motion. It's the coordinated motion of all those molecules uh, that gives the appearance of what we call a wave. And what we think of as a wave is the ripple itself. And the ripple itself moves. The medium is the water. Yeah. Uh, can you have a, a wave without a medium, without water? Yeah. Yeah? How? Sound wave. Uh, so we have a sound wave, which is, has a different medium. That is air. And again, what you have is a little bit of back and forth motion in the air. And that creates the sound wave, which moves throughout your living room, uh, from your stereo to your ear. Uh, other things. Domino wave. Uh, what is the medium of a domino wave? So, it's the domino. Yeah. Uh, the wave, the ripple, is going to set it upright. The ripple goes all the way around the room. Do any of the dominoes go all the way around the room? No. The dominoes fall over. And then they stop. But the wave, the wave, keeps going all around the room. Uh, other waves. Uh, all right. When was the last time you were in a football game? A football stadium wave. One of my particular favorites. What happens in a football stadium wave? Well, it starts over there. You're watching for it. You're sitting. You watch it come by. You watch it come by. You stand up. You sit down. And the wave continues. What is the medium of a football stadium wave? Fans. People. Do any of those people go all the way around the stadium? But the wave goes, <laughs> if, they, if they need a hot dog and the mustard's on the other side. Uh, but the wave, the wave 
goes all the way around the stadium. All right, just to reiterate the point, if you take away the medium, if there is no medium, there is no way for a water wave, if you take away all the water, drain it, you get no water wave. The falling object comes down, it hits the bottom, and it says, plunk, creating a sound wave. But no water wave. If you take out all the air out of uh, a jar that goes around it, make it a vacuum, now you haven't got any air, now there's not even any sound wave. There's no medium. No medium, no wave. Okay. The ripple of a wave radiates. If you've got a nice flat pond and you drop a pebble in the middle of it, it makes these beautiful concentric circles. Really love it. When they hit the sides, come back in, the waves cross. And as they cross, they create pretty patterns. Now, this is called wave interference. And the basic uh, technique of wave interference is one wave is going this way, another wave is going this way, and they meet, and they can just cross. The particle motion is such that they can cross pretty much without interfering with each other, that is, without uh, uh, changing the nature of the wave. <coughs> but as they meet, if you have two uh, wave crests that meet together, uh, they double in height. Double. Two wave crests the same height, then double. Take one, add it on. The other one, the wave crest as it crosses is going to be twice as high. This little illustration being um, drop coin here, drop coin there, the two wave crests go, and uh, I don't know if that's graphic enough or large enough for you, but you can see that the middle wave where they cross is twice as high. Same thing works for the trow. When the two trowels come together, like that, then as they come together, it will be twice as deep. It works very easy. It's atoms. There's nothing uh, mathematically difficult about wave interference. It's adding two numbers. That's all wave interference is. But it can be a lot of fun. Patterns develop when you have two waves interfering. And two waves interfering is just two waves crossing. That's all it means. Uh, but we get wonderful uh, patterns. Um, imagine, thought experiment, that you have a wave traveling along and it meets a barrier uh, with a gap in it. So maybe the entrance to a harbor, a great big wave coming in, it meets uh, a barrier with a gap in it. As it comes down, what's going to happen as it meets that gap? Hmm? It increases speed because it, it's going in there, but it's going to start a new wave from that little gap, and that new wave is going to radiate outward. So a big wave coming in, and then it hits the gap, and now we got a new wave. Where the barrier is, there's going to be a little calm water behind it until it starts to spread out. Here's what happens when you have the wave hit a barrier with two slips. Uh, which is the wave coming out. You can see a barrier here, but, uh, the barrier here, and a gap here, gap here. And now we have two waves that start out at those points, and they start to overlap. And these are, they started with the same wave, so they are symmetrical waves. Uh, and they overlap in this nice, symmetrical, pleasing pattern. All right, so we know about waves. Ooh that they are coordinated motion within a medium. We know about waves that the wave motion radiates uh, within the medium. We know that overlapping waves interfere by simple addition. Add the two numbers together and you get the result. And we know that predictable patterns develop according to the wave interference. And when you have, particularly when you have two symmetrical waves, you see those beautiful uh, Folks radiating, it's a very nice, pleasing, symmetrical pattern.